Hey, Duncan, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. Um, over the past month, I guess in, in April, the month just ended, but over the past month, the offense has seemed to take up a little bit, just the numbers. Um, what would you say has been the biggest reasons for that? I know some of it's just make or miss, you know, making more open shots, but what, what have you noticed about what's been better on that side of the court for you guys recently? Um, you know, I think when we're, we're playing well offensively, we're really organized. You know, we got good spacing. Um, the ball's going where it needs to go, and it's, it's in the right people's hands. So um, I think that's helped uh, just everybody get on the same page in terms of that, you know. You know, we've had a, a kind of ever-changing roster this year, um, new new acquisitions and guys in out of the lineup. So obviously I think just developing some continuity also helps as well. So I think it's a combination of things. And, and then just one in the season overall, um, you know, last season was unique in the bubble and finishing there and being away from home and being isolated. But how much of a grind has this season been? Now that you're coming, you know, to the final weeks of the regular season, just how tough has it been? Has it, has it been tougher than you expected just going through this, you know, all these games and, and this condensed um, schedule? Yeah, you know, it's definitely been a challenge. Um, you know, we're not alone in terms of the only team that's going through it. Obviously, everybody's uh, going through it's kind of the new normal that we're all adjusting to. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's funny, you know, it's, it's, this is kind of blended in, um, in some respects with the bubble and it just kind of feels like this, this dead out sprint, uh, you know, just because we're playing every other night and a whole bunch of back to backs mixed in there. Um, you know, like I said, though, everyone's going through it. So, you know, you can gain a competitive advantage if you're, you as a team are willing to kind of wrap your mind around, uh, what everyone's going through. So it's definitely been a challenge. Um, but once again, you know, try to keep everything in perspective. Um, on, uh, you know, this is the thing we got to complain about the most, and we're all doing pretty well. Thanks, Duncan. Yeah. All right, Ira Rindeman, go ahead. Hey, Duncan, I, I know now that more of your attempts are coming inside the arc. Um, I'm just curious, when you, make, when you make your dashes inside the paint, do you sense your opponents still are looking at you as decoying and that you're going to wind up curling or heading back out? And do you, do you think that maybe sort of you catch them by surprise when they think you're just – I guess passing through. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the cuts and stuff are a change of pace of what I'm normally doing, but you know, it's been a pretty steady diet of, of back cuts um, this whole year, and you know, I think that that stuff is is starting to gain some recognition, um, and that you know, a lot of it's not, it's not necessarily myself, you know, cutting, but more so the ability that we have guys are are, are able to make those passes because those aren't easy passes, you know, in the pain and. Um, you know, kind of through through hands and, and limbs. Um, but yeah, I mean, I it's it's always a, an opportunity to keep the defense honest, right? You know, if they're getting too comfortable uh, with with guarding me a certain way, um, it's a good kind of change of pace, I guess, in that regard. So uh, obviously, I think the the main thing, you know, defense is try to keep the main thing the main thing with me in terms of not letting me get threes. But uh, it definitely kind of can open some things up. I'm able to loosen myself up for some back. Then. It seems to me the eye test says something different, but I went back and checked the numbers today. Last year, 80, last season, 88% of your attempts were on three-pointers. This year, 85% of your attempts are, are on three-pointers. Doesn't it seem a lot different? You know, that it, it just feels like you're a more active player inside the arc this season. Um, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, you know, numbers obviously tell a story, but it's, it's just, you know, one one part of the story. I think everything... Uh, you know, needs to be evaluated in, in context. Um, and I think the eye test does matter and that field does matter. So, you know, you just try to take everything into account. And I feel like I've, I've improved and, and expanded and just become more difficult to guard in that respect, um, not just being as much of a one-trick pony. Obviously, you know, my three-point shooting spacing has always been my calling card, but you know, the more I can diversify, uh, the more effective I can be. And the last one for me, and again, this just, I always find this confounding, and it's another pattern that maybe is not as borne out as stats is what it looks like. But the first foul of the game, just like you're the first three-pointer of a game, it just, it just seems every stinking game, 25 seconds in, on the most meager of contacts, there's a Duncan Robinson foul, as if you start the game with one. How confounding is that? And, and is that something you've sensed also, that, that, like, why me first? There were four other guys on the team. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I notice it, um, you know, it's something I, I could certainly be better at, and I'll, I'll definitely take accountability for that. Um, you know, also understanding that this situation and that, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't warrant the respect, um, and kind of maybe the leeway that, uh, other players, you know, on, on our roster, you know, guys like Jimmy, who, who has that 
defensive reputation to be physical. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's kind of just what comes with it. Um, I got to be more kind of aware, I guess, um, of, of just kind of preserving it and protecting uh, and just being solid, you know, in, in those instances. Appreciate it. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah. All right, we bring Anthony Chang back. Go ahead. Hey, Duncan, sorry, I had one more to kind of go off of Iris' question. Um, you, when you get into the paint this year, you've been really effective as a finisher. I think you're shooting like 80%. Um, at the rim this season, how, how would you um, explain that? Like, is that just the work you've been doing in the offseason behind the scenes to, to expand your package, you know, around the rim? Or is it your height, you know, where you're able to use that to your advantage? How would you explain just your efficiency around the rim this season? Um, you know, I think the, you know, you, you can't uh, overlook the, the shot selection. It's not like I'm taking, like, you know, tough loaders or anything like that. A lot of my shots, you know, I'm very selective. Um, you know, usually I'm not getting the ball in there unless I'm I'm pretty open. Um, so you know, of, of course, you know that helps um, being just kind of prudent in, in my decision making in there. And then the other one is, uh, yeah, you know, I feel like I've, I've worked it a lot. Um, obviously, I'm not an elite like high volume finisher, but I, I do feel like I have solid touch and feel around the rim and um, an ability to understand, you know, how and you know the the angles and areas in which I can get shots off. So. Uh, it's definitely something I've improved and, and developed. Um, testament to the staff that's kind of pushing me in the area. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Bye. All right, Duncan. Thank you.